Hello viewers, this is the part 2 of the tutorials on Amazon RDS for Oracle where we will learn how we can migrate an on-premises Oracle database to an Oracle RDS database instance. In the last tutorial, we created an Oracle RDS database and also I explained briefly about the RDS custom and EC2 instances. Now let's discuss about migrating an on-premises Oracle database to RDS. There are multiple ways to migrate an on-premise Oracle database to RDS, which are using the Oracle Data Pump EXPDP IMPDP commands, using data migration services or DMS provided by AWS, using a Golden Gate replication between the on-premises to the RDS database instance, etc. In this video, we will demonstrate the simplest of all these that is the migration using data pump export import. We will discuss the other methods in some future tutorials. So Oracle RDS being a semi-automatic database, many of the administrative activities such as the backups, the patching, high availability, etc. are already either fully or partially automated. We don't have direct access to the database host or the file systems. And also, we cannot use the sys or system account to perform our normal DBA activities, but RDS provides an admin or master user, which can also be termed as the super user of the RDS instance, and that can be used to perform the limited number of database administrative activities. So, in an RDS instance, the traditional data pump expdp impdp commands cannot be executed in the OS prompt. Rather, we have to use certain APIs or packages which are made available to us in the RDS database along with an S3 bucket as a staging area to accomplish our task. I assume you already know about the Amazon's S3 or simple storage solution which is a cloud storage option provided by AWS. I also assume that your organization's network security policies, firewall rules, etc. have been already established along with your AWS account to allow traffic between the AWS and your organization's domain or network. Normally, as a DBA, you don't have to take care of these things like setting up the VPC or virtual private cloud security groups, private or public subnets, etc. I assume all this setup has been already completed at your organization level by other teams like network, security, etc. Now let me explain migration procedure that we will follow here in a diagram first, then we will see it in action. Say we have an on-premise Oracle database to migrate to RDS. We will first do a traditional data pump export of the database or the specific application schemas that we want to migrate and that will create one or more dump files in the local file system of the on-premises database host. We will then upload these dump files to an AWS S3 bucket that is designated for the RDS instance. Once the upload to S3 is complete, we will then download the dump file from S3 to a local file system in the RDS host using a database directory object that belongs to the RDS instance. Because we cannot directly access the RDS host file system, please note that the RDS instance must have the S3 integration option enabled to be able to download or upload files from and to the S3 buckets. Once the dump file is available in the RDS host file system, which is pointed to by the database directory object in the RDS instance, we will import the dump file to the RDS instance using API calls. And this API is nothing but the DBMS data pump package, which is already provided by Oracle to do data pump export import using PL SQL code or programmatically. Now let's see this in action. First, I will establish two sessions to the respective source and the target database using Toad. You can use SQL Developer or SQL Plus also if you don't have the Toad software available. The first session I will establish to the on-premise Oracle database named CatDB as system user. I am connected to the source database. Next, to connect to the RDS instance, apart from the user credentials, you need the set of connection parameters that usually we take in case of TNS entry, which are the host name, listener port, and the database SID. In the RDS terminology, the host name is called the endpoint and the SID is called the database name. So let's go to our AWS console home 
and find out these three parameters of our RDS instance. Go to DB instances under RDS and we have a couple of database RDS database instances created here out of which I will select the one that I created for our testing purpose which is named as RDS test. Here if you go to the configuration and security tab you will be able to see there is something called endpoint. So this endpoint is the host name for the TNS entry that we are going to create and we can also see there is a port 1522 which is used for this RDS instance. The next thing is the database SID is actually the DB name parameter which we can find out by scrolling down a little and we can see that the DB name is RDS test. Ideally it is the same as the database identifier in the summary page or the DB instance ID in the configuration page but in case it is different then the value in the DB name field will prevail. Now I'll copy the endpoint and go to the TNS names.ora file to create another entry for the RDS instance. So go back to connectivity tab and copy this endpoint. We'll temporarily paste the endpoint that we just copied and then we will make a copy of the existing TNS entry for the source database which was already there in our TNS names.ora file and modify this host name with the endpoint name that we copied along with the port which is going to be 1522 and the service name is going to be our RDS test and of course we have to change the TNS alias which is also RDS test save this file and now we'll go back to our toad window and connect to this RDS test instance using the TNS alias that we just created as the admin user. Go to the sessions and we will use the admin user along with the password and the TNS entry that we are going to use here is the RDS test and click connect and our second session to the RDS instance is also established. Now we have both the sessions opened side by side one to the on-premises Oracle database as system user and the other to the RDS instance as the admin user which is the super user for this RDS instance. Now in the source database I have already created this user called app user which we will take as an example source database schema to be migrated to RDS and it has a few objects let's take a look what are the objects it owns so there are three tables and three indexes and a sequence so we will export this from our source database using xpdp command and the command I'm just pasting here just to explain the parameters that I'm using it's it has the user ID as sys as we are going to export it using sys user the directory object is data pump directory the dump file we are putting a name like app user underscore on-prem dot pmp and the log file name then the schemas I'm specifying only the app user schema here and I am also using the flashback time as sys timestamp to make this export dump a consistent one. And now I'll copy this command and I'll go to the source database host and the session I established to the source database host as Oracle user. And I'll simply paste this command that I copied from the toad window, which is going to take like a few seconds because this schema is a very small one having only six, seven small objects. Okay, now the export has been completed and the dump file created is available with a size of around 22 MB. Now I have to transfer this dump file to my local Windows PC so that I can upload it to the AWS S3 bucket designated for the target RDS instance. 
Please note that there are also options available to mount an AWS S3 bucket directly to the source server as a file system, in which case you can directly upload the dump from the source on-premises server to the S3 bucket instead of downloading it to your local PC first. And we will cover that in another video. I just transferred the dump file from the source server to my local PC's desktop folder and the name of the dump is app user on -prim .dmp. Now click on the services, then go to S3 and we have a lot of buckets created here and I will select the bucket that is designated for the migration purpose under which I will select the subfolder created with the name DBA and I will upload this dump file to that DBA subfolder. I can simply do a drag and drop or using the add files or folders button here. So drag and drop is quite easy. So let's do it and I will simply place the dump file on the drag and drop box here and we'll click on upload. So it's being just a few MBs. It will take like a few seconds to upload. And the upload has been completed. Now I'll close this window and we can see the dump file available in our subdirectory under the S3 bucket. Now we will go back to our toad window and to the session which we established to the RDS instance and I have pasted all the commands that I'm going to use here to migrate this dump to the RDS instance and you'll be able to find all these commands in the description of this video below or a link to a text document that I have shared through my Google Drive. So first of all, I will create this user here which is named as app user and right now it doesn't have any objects. I'm using a package to copy the dump file that we uploaded to the S3 bucket to the data pump directory and that SQL command is here that is RDS admin underscore S3 underscore tasks download from S3. Here I would like to introduce this RDS admin user or schema. Please note that this RDS admin user is different than the admin user we created along with the RDS database. RDS admin is a fixed user or schema in an RDS instance that owns all the objects or APIs that RDS has to offer to accomplish various administrative activities. Whereas the admin user is the master user or super user, whatever you call it as, that we defined during the RDS database creation is actually the administrator of the RDS instance. This is the particular procedure that is going to download the dump file from the S3 bucket to the local data pump directory of the RDS instance. And we are also specifying a few more parameters here. The P bucket name, that is from which bucket this dump file is going to be downloaded. The P S3 prefix, that is the subdirectory and the name of the dump file that is going to be downloaded under this bucket and which is nothing but the DBA subdirectory and under that app user underscore on-prem dot DMP, this particular file and the P directory name this is specifying to which local file system which is pointed to by this data pump directory this dump file will be downloaded and we will execute this procedure which is going to return one task id this task id is important because to find out the status of this download task we will use this task id and we will put this in this particular sql command and this is again under RDS admin schema and RDS file utilities package and under that read text file. This is the procedure which is going to give us the status of this download task and we can see that the last line which is saying the task finished successfully. It means the dump file has been successfully downloaded from the S3 bucket to the local file system of the RDS host. Now we can find out all the files which are available in the data pump directory of the RDS instance. 
we are using here the list dir procedure under rds file util package that is owned by the rds admin user and it gives us a list of all the files available and i am ordering it in the descending order of modification time and we can see that the dump file has been downloaded next we will use a plsql block to do the import activity so i have to explain this and using this declare begin and end and closures i am specifying a handle of type number which is going to give us the handle for the job that is going to be executed as import job and we are going to use the data pump package as i explained earlier this package has been already in place and using the open procedure we are importing the data and it is in the job mode schema and job name null it means it is going to be taken automatically by the system then in the dbms data pump add file option we are again specifying the handle and we are going to select the dump file that we are going to import and its location that is the data pump directory and the file type this is a data data pump file type which is already defined by oracle then again we are adding the log file using the same handle the impdp app user onprem.log and the directory where this log file will be created is the data pump directory again then the file type again it is taken as a system files type specified by oracle data pump package then we are executing certain filters so that we are going to import only the app user so we are specifying this through the procedure called metadata filter specify the handle schema export and schema in app user and i have commented out this particular line which is specifying another remap command which can be used to remap the schema if we want the import to be done to a user different than the source user so where our source was app user if we want to import the data to a different user like app user 2 then we can specify that using this line and this line again i am remapping the table space using same the handle the remap table space clause and here the source table space name was app underscore tbs and the target table space name will be users for example usually users is not a table space that we want to migrate data to but for this example this is okay and also if we want we can specify the parallelism of this import job if we are doing a big import activity and we want to complete it faster then we can also parallelize this activity using this number as the degree of parallelism and then we will simply use the start job procedure of the dbms data pump package now we will select this entire block and run it as a script which is going to give us the status like whether it was successfully submitted and here we'll be able to read the log file that is created by this import activity as we specified our log file is impdp app user on prem.log which is available in the data pump directory we will use this command that is rds admin dot rds file utilities dot read text file from this particular folder and the log file and we can see the progress here where it has already imported these three tables and the indexes and whatever objects were owned by the app user schema and this import job has been successfully completed with one error that is expected because the user app user was already created in this target rds instance now we can see what are the objects owned by the app user in the target environment and we can see that all the objects which were available in the source environment are now available in the target rds instance so this is how we can use the data pump export import to migrate our on-premise oracle database to an amazon rds database instance so this was a small schema that we took as an example of database migration from an on-premise oracle database to an oracle rds instance this export import works great if you want to do an offline migration where downtime is accepted but if you want to do the migration without downtime or if you want to minimize the downtime then there are other options available like amazon data migration services or dms or you can also set up a golden gate replication between the on-premise oracle database 
and the RDS instance which we are going to cover in different tutorials. So viewers I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful and if you did please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss similar educational videos that I am uploading every week.